a viewer of this channel recently asked me about how to automatically assign IP addresses to devices on a local network. So in this video, we will look at setting up a DHCP server or a dynamic host configuration protocol server for your local network using the Kane distro. A device usually needs four things in order to connect to a network and the internet. The first thing we need is an IP address. This is a way for other computers to contact your computer. It's like a phone number. Everybody has a unique phone number so they can communicate with each other. There are currently two IP schemes, IPv4 and IPv6. In this tutorial, we are only going to talk about IPv4 for simplicity. So IPv4 addresses look like 192.168.2.75. So it's basically four octets of decimals ranging from 0 to 255, and then they're all separated by a period. Second thing you need is a net mask. This defines the size of the network that the device is on. The net mask can be used to figure out when you are reaching the outside network. So an example of a net mask setting would be 255.255.255.0 or slash 24 if you're looking at the CIDR notation. So what this means is that this network is going to have 254 devices on there. The default gateway is the third item that we need. This is the way to get out to another network. So for example, you can say 192.168.1.1 is your default gateway. So what this means is that if a IP address is not on the local network as determined by the net mask, 192.168.1.1 is the machine that the traffic will go to if the destination is outside of the net mask. The fourth and last thing that you may need to get on the network, especially the internet, is a DNS server. So basically DNS is a protocol that translates domain names to IP addresses. DNS can be performed locally on your own device uh, using the slash sc slash host file or the Etsy resolve.config, or you can go to a known DNS server like 8.8.8.8, .8 which is Google. These four items can be manually set by the system administrator for each machine, or it can be automatically assigned by a DHCP server. The DHCP server actually is not limited to assigning just the IP address, the net mask, the default gateway, and the DNS. It can assign Windows Internet Name Service servers, proxy servers, network time protocol servers, domain name, a host name, etc. In the digital forensics and incidents response world, you often want to be on an isolated network when you are controlling the services available on that network. So being able to control your own DHCP server is very valuable. So let's take a look at how to set up a DHCP server on this local network. Like everything else, there are different software packages that you can use for DHCP server, but I'll be using the open source version maintained by the Internet System Consortium called ISC-DHCP-Server. To install on an Ubuntu distro such as Kane, which is what I'm using, you can do an apt install. So I'm going to go ahead and type sudo apt install and then isc-dhcp-server. So the first question from the install is to specify the network interface that the DHCP server should listen for the requests. And since my machine only has one network interface, I'm going to leave it blank so that it can be automatically detected or I can hard set it later on in a config file. If you have multiple interfaces, you can enter the desired interface like ETH0. So after a little while on my system, the install process completes. All right, now that the server software has been installed, let's go ahead and configure it to work on our network. The main configuration file for isc-dhcp is slash etsy slash dhcp slash dhcpd.conf which was just created when we installed the DHCP server. 
So let's take a look at the file using your favorite text editor. I'm going to use uh, sudo vi and then etsy dhcp dhcpd.conf. The way that this file works is that if a line starts with the pound symbol, that line is treated as a comment. The first non-comment line are options for the domain name and domain name servers. Let's leave that alone for now. Next is the default lease time and max lease time, and the units are in minutes. And so if we look at this, the uh, client lease time is set to 10 minutes, and the maximum lease time is set to two hours. Those sound reasonable for now, so I am not gonna touch those. In this next section is the authoritative directive, and the comments say that if our DHCP server is the official DHCP server for the network, we should uncomment that line. So I'll go ahead and do that by just deleting the pound symbol. Next, what we need to do is define a subnet. So let's take a look at the examples. You see here that they have different kinds of subnet settings, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my own. So this is what I'm gonna go ahead and type. So I'm gonna do subnet 10.20.30.0, and then set the net mask to 255.255.255.0, and then open curly braces. And then next I am gonna specify the interface. Like I said, if you have multiple interfaces, you can have different subnets on the different interfaces. So for this one, I'm gonna do interface ENP0S31F6. And I know this because I had looked at the interfaces before, but if you don't know what your interfaces are, you can either do an IF config or else you can do an IP space adder. So make sure you put the semicolon at the end of the line here. And then the next line, I'm gonna specify the range of addresses that this DHCP server is gonna serve out. And I'm gonna limit the range to 10.20.30.100 through 10.20.30.150. And once again, don't forget the semicolon at the end of the line. And then now we can specify a bunch of different options. So I'm gonna specify the option of routers 10.20.30.1 semicolon. So what this means is that the gateway for this local network is the dot one machine. And next I am going to set the option for domain name servers. So these are the DNS servers and I'm gonna have them running on my network on dot four and dot eight. So I'm gonna tell this line of 10.20.30.4 comma 10.20.30.8 semicolon. And my last option is gonna be domain name. And then I'm gonna give it the domain name for this network. I'm gonna call it company x.defer. And once again, make sure you have the semicolon. And then lastly, you want to put the end curly brace. All right, once we are done with configuring the server, we can start the server to see the effects. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and type sudo system control start isc-dhcp-server. And to check on what we just did there, we can do system control status isc-dhcp-server. Notice that the active status now is red and says failed. So there are a few possibilities for this. The primary one is that we had a typo in the dhcpd.conf file. So let's go ahead and tail the log file to C. So we can do tail-30 slash var slash log slash syslog. In this case, we see that I have a typo for the domain name. So I'm gonna go ahead and VI the config file again. And this time I'm gonna add double quotes around the name of the domain, which is company x.defer. So I'm gonna do sudo vi slash etsy slash dhcp slash dhcpd.conf. Go ahead and add the double quotes. And now we can restart the server to see the effects. 
So I'm going to do sudo system control restart of isc dhcp server. And once again, I'm going to do a check on the server by doing system control status isc dhcp server. Note that the active status is now green, but there is an error that says ENP0S31F6 is missing an interface address. Okay, so we can go ahead and check that with IP-BR space A. And so what we see here is that for the interface of ENP0S31F6, there is no associated IP address for our server. So we actually need to go ahead and statically assign an IP address to the server first before we can dynamically assign people their IP addresses. So I'm going to go ahead and do this manually. sudo IP ADDR, and then I want to add the IP address of 10.20.30.10 slash 24 is going to be the net mask. And then for the device, it's going to be on ENP0S31F6. And now we can go ahead and verify what we just did with the IP-BRA again. And great, looks like we have an IP address assigned now to ENP0S31F6. So let's go ahead and restart the server one more time by either going up arrow or just go ahead and retyping sudo system control restart isc dhcp server. And once we've done that, once again, you can either up arrow or just type out system control status of isc dhcp server. And excellent. Now the active status is green and it says that it's active and running. And we can uh, verify this with other methods like running the process stat command and then grepping for DHCP. So you can do ps aux, pipe that through grep of DHCPD. And sure enough, we see that there is a process running with DHCPD, which is the DHCP daemon. We can also run the netstat command and add in options to only look at listening ports on UDP protocol and then with the IPv4. And we're limiting this because I know I'm not uh, interested in IPv6 for this particular tutorial. And I also know that the DHCP service is running on the UDP ports. So once we get the results here, after I run netstat-lu4, we see that the boot PS service is listening on a UDP port. And then if we up arrow and add a letter N, so that it doesn't actually resolve the, uh, the service names, we can see that the service is listening on port 67, which is once again, the port meant for the boot PS service. And now we know we are ready to dole out IP numbers. So now let's test out the server to make sure it's working. From another machine that is on the same physical network, we can double check to make sure there is no assigned IP currently. So I'm going to do IP-BR of A. And we see that there is no IPs associated with any of the interfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and run DH client to obtain an IP from a DHCP server on the network. So sudo dh client. And after a little while it comes back and I get this error that says uh, RF kill related because what I really should have done is specified an interface with my dh client command. Otherwise, if I don't specify an interface, it is just going to go out to all the interfaces and then look for a DHCP server on all those networks. And since I have a wireless card on here, that is the one that's giving me this RF kill error. But we can ignore that for now. I should have, like I said, done a, um, a specific interface. But the Ethernet side request is, is still going to work. All right, so if you don't believe me, we can run the IP command again. And now we see that we have been assigned an IP to the Ethernet side because the DH client command reached out 
to a DHCP server on the network. And then the one that we just set up responded and assigned an IP. And so we see that the Ethernet interface now has an IP of 10.20.30.100, right, which is in the range of what we configure the server to dole out. And then we can test to make sure the network is working by pinging another machine on this network to verify that the IP addresses were assigned properly. So I'm going to go ahead and ping, let's say, the DHCP server. So ping 10.20.30.10. And we do get a response back from that machine. So we know we are successful with setting up a DHCP server on our network. And then we've also tested it with a client requesting for an IP. If you're interested in what the DHCP server has been doing, you can check on the logs, right? The system logs at var log syslog. So let's go ahead and do a tail of slash var slash log slash syslog. So the system logs all the requests from the clients and then also the assignments. We can see here that the DHCP discover requests came from MAC address of our client. So this first step is where a client which does not have an IP address broadcasts a series of DHCP discover packets on that network to find DHCP servers. And then any DHCP servers on that network will respond with the DHCP offer and then an IP address and these will go back to the client. And once the client sees the DHCP offer, it can accept that offer by sending the DHCP request. And then finally, the server sends back the DHCP act to acknowledge the request. So this is a little handshake that happens and the server has successfully granted a lease to the client. And so we can see all this activity in the syslog file. And if you want to see the current leases that are outstanding on this DHCP server, we can do a more of the file slash var slash lib slash DHCP slash DHCPD dot leases. So as we can see here, uh, if you want to look at it from a network forensics purpose, we can look at these log files to see if there are any unauthorized machines that have logged onto your network. And if they're still on, you can see their assigned IP address, their MAC address, when they requested for the DHCP service, and then, interestingly enough, the host name. As you have seen here, setting up your own DHCP server is not too bad. The server can dish out IP addresses on one or more networks, depending on the number of network interfaces your device has. In addition to the IP address, you can control various timings of the leases, the IP numbers assigned, the net mask, the DNS servers, the gateway router, the domain name, etc. And there are various logs on the system that can tell you information about the devices that got assigned an IP on the network. Information of those devices such as the MAC address and the time of request may be useful for your defer investigations. For more videos about networking, watch these videos here. To get notifications for new videos, make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.